This is Wholesaling Houses Elite, the no fluff and BS podcast with tips and tricks to help you become an elite wholesaler. Our guest will spill the beans on what it takes to be the best. This podcast is brought to you by Lead Gen Pros, making it incredibly easy for the average real estate investor and business owner to get more leads. They work with a variety of companies who specialize in real estate investing and who are looking for a systemized way to increase their lead flow and grow their business. If that sounds like you, check out theleadgenpros.com. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Max Maxwell. Welcome to another podcast. Now, this is crazy, right? Because when I created this podcast, I didn't think people would fly to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to sit in my office, to sit in my studio and actually do a podcast. So today all the way from phoenix arizona is my guy mm -hmm. brent daniels with ttp welcome to north carolina brent. yeah this is exciting <laughs> man i mean this is finally like you know it's funny i think that people see you yeah. on youtube right and then after like three or four videos then all of a sudden Boom. one of mine pops up <laughs> and they see me going crazy yeah. talking about ttp and and uh the whole philosophy there and being proactive and picking up the phone and that type of thing but this is awesome it's a beautiful town thank you you've man. got an unbelievable facility unbelievable you. staff you got amazing things going on and it's just it's an honor man right. i think that you're at the you're you're the pinnacle of really providing value to people that are that are getting into this business and looking to grow it and really like replace their incomes like really do their for you doing deals or continue to yeah. have inspiration to stay in this business i mean you're the best you're the I, best so it's an honor it really I don't know is about i'm the best but I'm, yeah. work, I'm working on it man i i appreciate you uh you know talking about the facility because it takes a lot to put out these videos it yeah. takes a lot for you to fly here to yeah. talk to the audiences um, but let's let's dive into you because yep. I purposely do not research any of my podcast guests yep. because I just want to have a natural conversation with you. Yep. I don't want to talk about what we can't talk about, what we can't talk about. Yeah, you know, and we don't even edit these, so these are just like straight raw, and I love it. Yeah, but for me on the scene, I think I don't know how I found about Brent Daniels. I yeah. think you just showed up one day. Yeah, so. Tell us what TTP means yeah. and kind of tell us how you got into the business. Yeah, I love it. So uh, young, mushy brain, 20, 21 years old, yeah. right? Read the Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Love All it. of a sudden that that pilot light starts mm -hmm. inside me, that, that entrepreneurial spirit and more importantly, directed towards real estate, yeah. right? So what do I do? Something similar to what you did. You get your real estate license, right? And you think if I get my real estate license, then all of a sudden I'm gonna know really good deals. I know I'm gonna know how to uh, get uh, passive cash flow and flip properties and all this stuff. But we know that's not true. Not at all. We know that getting a license doesn't give you any of that. It, it really is education. Correct. It is not showing you how to actually you know, make income in this business at all. So I got stuck in that, in being a realtor for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I started, um, I started discovering that the best deals were the ones that I found that they weren't listed, right? They were off market. And what I would do is I would just drive around in neighborhoods, good areas, you know, mm -hmm. good up and coming neighborhoods people yeah. wanted to live in. And I would just door knock, right? I would just go to the door, hope there's not a no soliciting sign on there, right? Mm -hmm. And I would just try to have a conversation with somebody. Makes sense. See if they would consider an offer on their property. And so finally, after knocking and knocking and knocking, this gal gave me the number to the neighbor. She was a caretaker. Mm. And she says, call this gal. She lives in New York. Have a conversation. If she wants to sell it, I'll help her, whatever it was. Yeah. So I had one conversation, and you talk about this. You're mm -hmm. like one deal away, right? That's it. I say you're one call away. That's true. And I had that one conversation. I had the phone number, and I was like, I just got this deal, right? I'm going to make um, $20,000 on this deal by just making one phone call. How do I get all the phone numbers for everybody out there that has rough properties on the street? Mm -hmm. So I started there and um, cold calling wasn't a thing in our business, right? It really nope, wasn't. It was, it was like the, the analogy I have is like you're at a grocery store. You've got one checkout open 
and everybody's in line there. And then the other checkout opens up and everybody from the back goes to that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what cold calling is. That's what picking up the phone, talking to people is. Yeah. Everybody else is waiting in maybe direct mail or pay-per-click or whatever it is. So I'm just trying to find where, where there's not as much congestion. Exactly. You're trying, yeah. to, you're trying to zig when everybody else is zagging. So when you went door knocking, were you trying to list these properties? Uh, both. Yeah. Okay. I had both, I had both, uh, approaches. It was like, you know, if I, I went with, Hey, I, I have a buyer interested in this area. Cause I did, yeah. I had, I had investors Multiple, yeah. that wanted to, to do the, uh, big flips and development, whatever. And if they didn't, then I can always, you know, the back door is I'll list these properties, which yeah. I think turns into a distraction. Well, oftentimes if you're not yeah. prepared for that, but so are you originally from Phoenix? Yeah. So you grew up, you seen the growth in Phoenix. Yeah. Right. You've seen that. What is it? The like fifth fastest growing country first. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. like fat. It's like huge. It's yeah. like just the city itself and the Arizona itself is like one of the fastest growing states in the country. Right. Um, and, and it doesn't show up on the list of like the largest population in, in the country on a lot of lists. But I know it's huge. Huge. Um, five million people. Five. <sighs> yeah. So that's why there's so many deals because yeah. there's 5 million people. Now there's a statistic saying something like there's X amount of new people moving to mm -hmm. Arizona yeah. every day. Yeah. It's like, it's like 500, 800 families, something crazy. Yeah. So there's a lot of changing of ownership of properties and a yeah. lot of people that have what we call equity because their appreciation in their property went from, they bought it for 120,000 and yeah. it's now worth 300,000 in a matter of 15 years yeah. because of how fast it's grown. So you, you started out as a realtor like I did, mm -hmm. did not have the fear of talking to people. Mm -hmm. And and you went out and you got your first deal from talking to somebody that lived in New York, an absentee owner. Yeah. That's, that's just too easy. And, it just sounds too easy. Well, and here's the thing, Max. Like, you said that I didn't have a fear of talking to people. I absolutely did. I wasn't prepared <laughs> yeah. for this. Yeah. I wasn't prepared for, for the amount of rejection, the amount of conversations, the amount of different things that could be thrown at you mm -hmm. if you pick up the phone. But I figured, you know, if I make enough calls, right, it's a numbers game, right? Yeah, That's absolutely. what I thought. And then I realized... And we talked about this, um, man, probably a year ago when I was on your podcast. Mm -hmm. But I realized when you call somebody up and you ask them if they'd consider an offer in their property, they only give you one of six responses. Let's name them. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. That's the best one. That's yes, like. actually. Yeah. yeah. No, which is the most likely. Yeah. Right? How much will you give me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how'd you get my number? Right? Mm -hmm. Who are you? And maybe I'll sell it in the future. Perfect. That's it. So if there's six responses, you learn how to respond to those and you can keep the conversation going, or you you know that it's somebody that'll never do business with you, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people starting out in this business get excited if they have a really good conversation with somebody, Yeah, but they'll never do business with you. Correct. So you got to pre-qualify them as well. That's that's 100% truth because there's a lot of time you can waste, you know, like you know in this business, a maybe is a, is a killer. Yeah. I would rather know that you just don't want to sell or mm -hmm. you don't want to do business with me so I don't have to spend the time on you. I got five million other houses to call or something that, you know, five other pe million other people yeah. to call. So you're in this business and you created this TTP program. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? I mean, what is that? It was interesting. So I joined the, you know, I started listening to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. Too. That's how I got in there too. Right, right, right. So I started listening to that. And I got into that program, not to be like, not to understand how to wholesale. I had already been doing about a quarter million a year Love in it. wholesales, but I wanted to be around people doing more than me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to like take it to the next level. Cause it was, a, I was self-employed. Mm -hmm. I was, I was a highly paid professional, but I was not a business owner. There you go. You know what I mean? Big difference. Big difference. So let's, before we move on, let's yeah. talk about being a high paid employee versus being a business owner. What's mm -hmm. the big difference in those two things? Well, I think a couple different things. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, you know, there is, if, if we go with like Gary Vee's self-awareness yeah. thing, I think that there's definite self-awareness, mm -hmm. like being a business owner, you have to be a leader. Correct. Okay. That's the, that's the tough thing. Cause I've seen a lot of really, really, really talented people that man, if they get somebody on the phone, they are closing them. Mm -hmm. They're getting the biggest spreads. They're doing these things. They just, they're good at it. Mm -hmm. Their skills in, in, in wholesaling property is phenomenal. 
but they are terrible leaders. They're terrible at recruiting. They're terrible at training. They're terrible at sharing or setting up mm -hmm. systems, right? These are like go, go, go hustlers that just, you know what? They should stick with that self-awareness and just kill it by yourself. Correct. But if you want to be a leader, if you want to develop yourself, if you want to get yourself out of the business, mm -hmm. it's that whole thing, you know, are you working in it? Are you working on it? Are you, does it serve you or do you serve it? Correct. That's when the magic, you know, as well as I do. Yeah. I mean, I work 10 hours in my real estate business. Mm -hmm. We'll do a million and a half bucks, you know, and Love it's it. a 10 hours a week. Yeah. I'm here in North Carolina with you. <laughs> I've got, I got a text today. We got a $90,000 deal locked up. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I just got back into town last night and it runs for itself. I think when you become a true business owner, mm -hmm. instead of working for the business, you start to work for your employees. 100%. It's a big difference. There's a big difference in it. I don't have to be the day-to-day -day operator in my business, yep. but I now work for my employees. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes a good leader. Huge. They think they work for me. I actually work for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the difference between being in a high-paid person that, you know, has a, has a business, mm -hmm. but being a business owner is two different things. Totally different. So making that transition and, mm -hmm. and, and, wanting to scale you joined the wholesaling inc program. yeah i did i joined them there and um the training is to do direct mail mm -hmm. and it's the the best training that i know to get people into their first deals rinse and repeat do mm -hmm. it do it do it um so i started doing it a little bit and i got like anxious max like sitting there waiting dude <laughs> waiting around putting out a thousand, it was like maybe $1,100 worth of mail. Mm -hmm. I mean, this wasn't, this wasn't, wasn't life changing. Yeah. This wasn't crazy. But to me, back then it was, I was like holding my breath. I was like, I, I hope this works. You know what I mean? And we got some calls and it worked out, but that waiting, and then you set your, you set your, your, your uh, marketing up to certain phone numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So when it calls in, you know, it's a lead. Correct. So I'm waiting every call. Is it a lead? Every, yeah. You know, I'm at the gym. Do I have to stop working out? I'm at you know dinner with my wife. Do I have to start? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is a leash. If you if you're taking those calls yourself in the beginning mm -hmm. and you don't have something set up taking those, it is a leash of your schedule. I mean, you are like at the mercy of your marketing. I and that. I felt I it was just too much. I was like, I need to I need to have these conversations on my schedule, mm -hmm. and that's why from nine to noon I made cold calls to people that I felt had distressed properties or, yeah. or were in a position of distress. Yeah. And that, that's and the same thing I did. I told people, you know, I was making 200 calls a day when I was just a one man operation. Yep. And that's your, <coughs> sorry, that's your nine to 12. Mm -hmm. And then your evening calls yep. to catch people coming off of work. Yep. So, <coughs> sorry, I'm dying here. <laughs> so, you know, having that, you know, mentality that you just got to make these calls when, when you meet somebody, mm -hmm. And they have a fear of making calls. What are some? Is it is it that hey, here's here's the six responses. Here's how you answer them. Is how do you get people to overcome yeah. just having a casual conversation? Because that's all you're having. That's it. How do you get people to overcome that fear? A couple different things. Uh, first, it, you know, people don't make those calls for what are, what are called the three P's, right? Procrastination. Mm -hmm perfectionism and paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. So there will be people that I'm not gonna make the calls unless I know that this list is the absolute best list. I've scrubbed it and scrubbed it and scrubbed it. I make sure that the phone numbers are accurate. I'm making sure that, um, you know, that that they are all in tax defaults or they're all in probate or, you, you know, all these things. And so that's that. And I'm not gonna make a call until I know exactly what to say. I'm gonna practice it and practice it and practice. I'm gonna make up my own scripts. I'm gonna make up my own, you know, go through my own role play before ever jumping on the phone so you got to be careful of those three p's right mm -hmm. and 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 just don't let it don't let it control you right yeah uh the second part is this business comes down to one thing if we're talking about wholesaling if we're talking about sourcing deals mm -hmm. it comes down to one thing in my in my belief and that is you need to have consistent quality conversations with distressed property owners that's it that's if it. you focus on that you will win. You literally, it's undefeated, Max. And you cannot lose if you're having quality conversations with distressed property owners. When we created REI Rail, we told people that every single deal you have will somehow, some way, end up on the telephone. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you acquire the lead, how they initially made contact. Yep. Even if you're texting all day long, that lead will eventually end up with a phone call. So you better prepare yourself mm -hmm. with a script, 
with the stuff you need to know how to talk to people before you get started. Yes. But don't get caught up. Those three P's are genius mm -hmm. because people actually will never make a phone call. And I try to tell people, listen, you're just calling a person. And if you just act like a regular person and have your questions set or have yep. your what you're going to ask, mm -hmm. it's either going to end with those six things that you said. That's it. Period. That's it. Don't be fearful of this yeah. stuff. And I say, you know, you know, going to it, I say if you can if you can get to a thousand conversations mm -hmm. with homeowners, okay, and you ask them if they would consider an offer on their property, you can talk to anybody about real estate for your the rest of Correct. your life. Correct. So you're struggling. But Brent, I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to strangers. <laughs> I, I don't like, you know, I don't want to be salesy. I just want deals. Good luck. Yeah. But you can you can adjust that. You know what I mean? You can develop this over time. You don't have to be perfect the the, the first call. You learn and you learn and you learn and you learn. And nobody's you know perfect. No. Nobody's perfect the first call. As long as you know that you're not perfect and you're gonna get better with time, that's it. It's just mm -hmm. a You can give me and I hate when people say they scrub, scrub. I hate that. When you're scrubbing a list down, mm -hmm. you're scrubbing money away yes. from what you're doing. Yeah. You can't make the decision yourself on a person you've never met or talked to or know anything about mm -hmm. that they're going to be motivated. We create lists based upon life incidents that create a possibility of someone wanting to sell a property. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't want to need to get niche, 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 niche. I just need to know, hey, absentee, great. Out of state, great. Own the house for more than 10 years, great. Yeah. I'm just putting scenarios that likelihood that will make somebody want to actually sell their property. Mm -hmm. So what does your business look like now yeah. these days? Right, You're in Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. very competitive very market. Competitive. Everybody's there, yeah. but there's a lot of movement of property. So here, here's the thing, right? So um, national statistic is anywhere from six to 10%, and that's a big range, but anywhere from six to 10% of properties are in distress, mm -hmm. okay? So let's, Let's take out those 94% yep. that were never do business with us. Yep. Okay, let's assume we just get rid of them and we understand, recognize them when we have those conversations. Mm -hmm. We don't mind them telling us no and boom. So we're focusing on the six to 10%. In Phoenix, that's 75,000, 80,000 houses a year mm -hmm. are in distress. So it's a conveyor belt, Max. You know what I mean? There's plenty of opportunities. It's just who's going to, there's a couple of things. Who's gonna get to them at the right time and who's gonna build the rapport? build the trust, build, build, um, you know, friendship, but more just mm -hmm. trust that, that, that the deal will get done. You know so what I mean? When you said, you said, so out of a hundred houses, only 6% will actually be distressed. Six out. to 10 depends on the market. Yeah. But yeah. So that's no more than 6% to 10%. Yeah. So if you're making a hundred phone calls, yep. right, you could expect to maybe speak to six to 10 people that might be interested in some, maybe consider an offer. So yeah, yeah, well the statistics show, and and by the way, this is from millions of points of data. Yeah, like yeah. I train- Just not pulling it out of I, it. Yeah, I train, <laughs> I train the best of the best around the country making yeah. millions of calls, yeah. right? And typically you get one lead per 15 conversations, mm -hmm. okay? That's what you'll do. Somebody that's yes or maybe, something that, that's there. So you need to build up enough of those conversations to build a pipeline. Correct. And then from a pipeline, then things start rolling. But you need about 90 days, right? Yeah. It's different than marketing. Marketing's interesting because people, when, they're, when they call off of marketing or they fill in something online, their timeline's idea. shorter, mm -hmm. right? When you're reaching out, when when like you and I are reaching yeah. out, they're not necessarily ready to pop right now. They mm -hmm. they they need a little bit of time or it's whatever. Nurturing. We catch them before they start making those calls to marketing. Correct. So there's an advantage, but it also takes some time. So follow up's important, and uh, so yeah, I mean it depends. Max, if you talk to a whole list of driving for dollars, right? We talk about deal mm -hmm. machine, right? We both use it. Yep. I've got six people on it, you know, all connected, yep. right? The whole yep. deal, right? We download mm -hmm. that list. We call that list. We're obsessed with that list. That list is the best. Besides- Explain why yeah. it's the best. Okay. A couple different reasons. One, if it's if this property from a physical standpoint looks distressed, the homeowner has to do one of two things. They have to invest a ton of money into it, which most don't have mm -hmm. to fix it up, or they got to sell it as is, right? 
That's they, it. They have to sell it as is. This isn't, you know, the the new family is going to move in there with their dog and, you know, it's FHA compliant. No. And most agents mm -hmm. will never, never list a property. I used to be an agent. You used to be an mm -hmm. agent. I don't know if you're still licensed or not. But the point is, is as an agent, you walk into a house. That's a stress. You get a call from a homeowner. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, I want to sell this house. Happy, happy. We're going on list appointment. You walk over there. You look at the house and the first thing you think is, I can't list this property. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to buy it. It's not financeable. Nobody can get an FHA loan. Uh, Mr. Seller, I need you to do this, this, and this. It's going to cost about 50 grand for you. Then the person never, ever sells that house right. because a realtor or a licensed agent, and I should break down the difference. Not every licensed agent is a realtor. Right. A realtor is a private association that people... <laughs> it's yeah, not a government agency, it's, it's, not a, it's just a private company that that has control of the MLS in order to get access to yep. it as an agent, you have to be a member. Yep. So now that I broke that down, you typically won't, you typically will not list it as an agent at all. You right. would say, I can't help you, but when you fix these things, call me back. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the six to 10% distressed homes that never will end up on the marketplace. Yep. That's where we come in and we do our transactions. We make money. We buy these houses in an as is condition right. to fix it, mm -hmm. to bring it to market value. Yep. I, I can go on a tangent about that, but but that is where we make our money. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that you said one in 15 conversations. So if you're calling any type of list, and mm -hmm. especially the, the reason why we both love driving for dollars, because somebody's driving around and physically looking yeah. at these properties and they don't have to be on an absentee list. Yep. They don't have to be in a landlord list. Mm -hmm. It can be owner occupied, literally having the house and it's just I've inherited it 15 years ago, never had the money to fix it up. It's just like it is, the way it is. But I think I'm ready to cash out and maybe go get a condo somewhere or another house yep. or down payment for something new. That's why I love driving for dollars. Yeah. Do you have people in your office that are driving? You have paid 1099 people. How do you have your setup? This is great. Mm -hmm. So because of you know being on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, because the YouTube channel, people in Phoenix just want to work with you want an hour to learn wholesaling a week mm. so i've got six people that come in they do the driving for dollars on their own time mm -hmm. right we have certain quotas that we we have to meet and then they come in and, and i help them grow their wholesaling business so Love it. so it's an exchange it's an exchange 100%. They, they, they get a mentor yeah but then they also are giving something back for the mentor these people pay you to mentorship no, no, they pay me by getting me working, the driving for dollars. Working. So they're putting sweat equity yes. into seat meeting. I love it. hundred percent. I love it because here's the thing. Like if you're in your market and you feel like you need to protect your secret, you know, whatever it is, there's no secret. There's no secret. Stop it. You, you know, everybody has your buyers on your buyers list. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is 2019. <laughs> like I can skip trace your whole buyers list probably. Right you know now. what I mean? Like, come on. Um, so if you're out there in your community and you're, you're considering, you know, coaching people or mentoring people or doing meetups, mm -hmm. you're like the master of the pop-up meetup and, and giving value to the community. You know, I, I highly encourage people to do that because then it, it lets you, it brings really great people into your life. Correct. It really does. And you know what it does? It filters the BS people. Yeah. The people that say, hey, I want to learn. I need a mentor. But you never needed a mentor. And you never really wanted to learn. You just kind of want to check. Mm -hmm. So making people drive for dollars gives them an incentive that if they actually complete these tasks, yep. then you can spend an hour with me a week or a month or however you have it set up for mentorship. Yep. I think that's perfect. Two of them have already done their first deal for over $12,000. You know what I mean? We walked them through. It went through my disposition manager. Mm -hmm. Like... It was just, it's, it's incredible. This business is incredible. This is the best. Yeah. This is literally hitting the lottery, right? It, it is. I mean, people really, I, I mean, they see you for the first time or they find you and they're wondering about wholesaling. If you're watching this, wholesaling is hitting the lottery. Okay. Listen to me. It really is. Mm -hmm. You can literally go from, you, you could literally get what I would consider a massive deal, $50,000 plus. You could do that in one phone conversation. Mm hmm I mean, I've got story after story. You've got story after story after story Real people. about how all of a sudden through proactive efforts, because I know you were cold calling. I know you were setting it up. Yeah. I know that you've got, uh, you know, your fantastic services for people out there mm -hmm. to be able. I mean, you're, you're giving them the opportunity and the platforms to be able to make these calls. I mean, it's just all of a sudden with just your cell phone and the right data. That's it you can change your life. That's it. Understanding where the data comes from, what what you should be targeting, and the phone that you already have in your pocket, 
that you pay for every month mm-hmm. can change your entire life. It is. It, it changed mine. It changed yours. Oh, it changed big time. Countless of people that we know. Yep. It's just losing that fear mm-hmm. of moving or talking to people. And I think, what is some of the biggest takeaways in your TTP program yeah. that people know going up front, going into it, that they, they're going to be different or the things that you push or the sure what are some just takeaways that this when you leave this yeah. program yeah. you're going to be good at blank well first of all you can you can go on youtube you can go on podcasts you can you can put this all together and figure out the systems and how to do it yeah or you can just skip to the head of the line and and just do a proven system that's Correct. worked you know what Correct. i mean so Absolutely. basically it's pouring all of my experience over the last six years and continue to evolve into this is the most effective way to reach out mm-hmm. and talk Talk to people, yeah. right? This is how you get the best lists. This is what you say to them, and this is how you be efficient. Yeah, that's it. It's very simple. Let's not. Let, let, this is rocket science. And be do it consistently. That's it. That's it. Consistent conversations with people with distressed properties that's or situations. It. I'm telling you, if people will, will will bravely take the journey of tying their financial goals. I don't care if it's paying off their debts. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's buying assets like houses, apartment. I don't care if it's the I Ferrari it's, exactly. or the vacations or just freedom of schedule. If you tie, if you have that unbelievably strong connection between that and consistently have having quality conversations with distressed property owners, you win every time. Like you cannot lose. You can't. And I think that's, you just have to consistently do it. You got to want it more than your excuses. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you. What's that? About land. That's what I was, I was just about to go into that. You told me (laughs) that you're doing land deals and I'm like, yeah, Yeah. I've dibbled in it. Yeah. I've, I've got a website that I've had open and I've, I've actually, the funny thing you say that. So I had a website and I still have it where it was like, I don't remember what it was, but it was for North Carolina specifically, North and South Carolina. And I was like, sell me your land. Mm -hmm. And I got so many Mm -hmm. inquiries Mm -hmm. about selling their land. Tell me about this whole land thing you got going on. Okay. So first of all, uh, land is is typically divided into three different types. Okay. okay? We're talking infill, right? In town. Okay. Right? I think you bought your number one. I think the most watched video of all time that you've done we'll is I bought it. that la- land for $200, right? 200 Fifty bucks, I think it was. Now, was that was there houses next to it? I don't remember. There's there's houses. Yeah. Well, there's there's property around it. Yeah. So th- this is an infill lot. Mm-hmm. This is a perfect example. That's where you get your biggest checks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because with land, the beautiful thing is, typically people are totally unemotional about it. And you know, you bought it for two hundred dollars, right? It's just an annoying piece of grass I got to cut. That's it. <laughs> So either people will give it to you or they want 10 times the value, yep. right? There are these, you know, these guys that are, you know, thinking that the somebody's going to build a skyscraper on their land in the middle of a neighborhood or something, which never happens. Yeah. But either people, people cut to the chase with you. Either they want nothing or they want a ton. So um, I highly suggest if people are starting out, you call in town, right? Any vacant lots that you run across from driving for dollars or you can pull them on uh, prop stream, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You could pull mm-hmm. these lists yep. and and get vacant land in town. Then you've got kind of on the bubble, right? This is 45 minutes out of town. Mm-hmm. These are typically bigger lots, you know, acre, two acre to 10. Heading right? towards where development will yes. possibly be. Yes. Got it. People that are buying mm-hmm. these, they have, work, they have jobs in the city, but they hate uh, police, they hate, you know, just people being around them. They City like buses, just doing whatever yeah. they want to do on their own land. You know, they think that, you know, it's the most American thing that you could do is yep. own a big piece of land and nobody bugs you. Right. Got my, got my house in two acres. Yeah. Two acres. Right. Right. So, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. one of those. So mm-hmm. these are bigger, bigger lots. And then you've got rural land that's just in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you can pick that stuff up for Nothing, literally and nothing, and, and and then turn those over and make a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. So you 000. you said before mm-hmm. I was like, are you pretty good at this? He was like, yeah, I, I, you know what you're yeah, doing. Twenty deals a month, just from pieces yeah. of land can mm-hmm. be from this small to that big. Listen to me, listen to me, <laughs> listen to me, Max. Listen to me, listen to me, everybody out there, listen to me. Everybody training about land. Mm-hmm. Everybody tells you to mail them. Everybody. Guess what nobody's doing with pieces of land? Same thing they were not doing with with houses yeah. five years ago. I am telling you, if you pick up the phone, now listen, these could be smaller deals. These could be massive deals, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it just depends. I mean, it's like houses. But 
the conversations, Max, are phenomenal. Like when I turn my phone prospectors on to land, it's like the greatest day of their of so, their week, right? Let's have that conversation. So yeah. I, I've I don't think I've ever really called on land like that that mm-hmm. much. I buy little small parcels parcels inland because I it's cheap enough where I can pick up something for twenty five hundred bucks. Three thousand dollars. There's yep. a house on either side. Yep. If somebody wants to build in the future, they got to buy it from me. I'm going to build it myself. Or sell it to the neighbor. Or sell it to the neighbor that just wants an extra <laughs> piece of land that his daughter can kick the ball in without, That's and it. they own it. That's it. So, let me let me get this straight. What kind of conversation are mm-hmm. you having with a landowner on an on a, in a lot that's in the city? Hey, I'd like to see if you would consider an offer on your piece of land in the city. I mean, it's not, you're asking them if they would consider selling their that's property. It. Same thing. It's the same conversation. Wait, so wait, there's no instead magic, saying, wait, there's no magic, but wait. It, no, <laughs> instead of saying, hey, I was calling about the house I believe you own, you say, hi, I was calling about the piece of land I believe you own on Jackson Street. Get out of here. Yeah, what about that? Is that but, simple? But that's, it's that. Would you, you know, I wanted to call and see if you would consider an offer on your piece of land there. Yes, no, maybe, how much, who are you, how'd you get my number? That's mm. it. That's it. That's the only response. So, and a lot of time, I'm telling you, a lot of people will be like, you know what? Yeah, if, you know, if so I got the right s- price, who, or if who I got you the selling right these thing. to? Everybody. I mean, in town, you know. Number one, the biggest amount that you're going to make is the neighbor. 100%. You can skip Tracy. You could go knock on their door. You can send them a letter, whatever it is. Talk to the neighbor. Do you want to double your lot size for 15000 Absolutely. They love it. People, I mean, you'll sell it for more to the neighbor than anybody because else. Because it's the emotional attachment to the property that is adjacent to them. They don't want some jackass building, you know, a purple house next to them. You, you know what I mean? Or just deal with some sort of crazy person. You know hey, what mo- I mean? Most of the time on inland, in-city lots, yeah. the neighbor already thinks it's theirs. I know. They act like it because yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. vacant for so oh, long. They got, a tr- they got cars parked mm-hmm. in it. They've got, you know, their <laughs> trash overflow into yeah. it. They got their tree trimmings and whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, land is such, it's such, it's such the same animal, but you're saying, how do people, how do people find these empty lots? Mm -hmm. Is it best to just drive and pick them up? Drive. We pull them, we pull them straight from PropStream. Honestly, you can go vacant land and PropStream, pull it. It's not the most accurate. There is some, some other resources, but you know, for, for the whatever, 97 bucks a prop stream is a month. I mean, it's the, it's the best tool for that. The, the, the value is ridiculous, but, uh, you can pull it from that. You can pull it from your tax assessor. You can pull from the list source. You can drive around. You can probably have the title company or uh, closing attorneys pull them for you. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get land, but get land. So now everybody's after this podcast, everybody's gonna be running the land. <laughs> we'll see. Only the brave ones, only the proactive right. ones that right. are out there that are, that are gonna like you guys can watch this and get like entertainment from this. Yeah. Or you can get instruction and like really go do something. Because these are like real that, life real life things. Well that's that's what we do, right? That's what our whole channels are about is about giving you the the exact instructions and tools to use to be successful. Yeah. Press go. So, Pick up the phone, have a conversation, start that process. Start building up your endurance for mm-hmm. talking to people. Yeah. That's it. This is interesting, man. I, I love wholesaling. Where, mm-hmm. where do you see it going in the future? People ask me that question all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I have some magic eight ball or something. Yeah. Where do you see this going? There's a lot more people in this business now yeah. these days. That could be good and bad. Illinois recently passed a law. I haven't really talked about it much, but I was there the day before they passed it. Yep. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. I don't think that I, I don't, wholesaling feels like a very American right that you don't need to have some sort of license to be able to do, right? Correct. If you're going into a legally binding agreement with me and you have the rights under our law to be able to, to do what you want with that contract, to assign it, yeah. to close on it, to whatever it is, to be able to cancel it during a due diligence period, mm-hmm. that's your rights. And it's laid out in the contract. Yeah. If two adults that are of sound mind <laughs> are just are going into a, a, a contract, wh- wh- why do we need fiduciary duties? Why do we need uh, you know Unlicensed. licensing? Why yeah. do we need uh, another government agency that we pay to, to make sure, like, what is it? I, I don't know. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that are asking me, what are my takes on it? I, I'm going to do something. I'm going to talk about it soon. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, if if the 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 hurdle to getting into your financial freedom yeah. is a $700 class, yeah. you know, X amount of hours, go take the test. Yeah. Go 
go take it. Uh, I think Rashana even said in the Illinois, they're selling classes on Groupon. Like you can mm. go on Groupon and get a class for 250 bucks. Yeah. Just get it. Yeah. Get your license. There, I guarantee there's a broker that will love to have you in their office that knows you're going to be potentially mm -hmm. mainly wholesaling deals. Yep. I mean, there's probably, I know there's already brokerages that focus on having that. Yeah. So just go out and do it. Yeah. Don't make an excuse to say, oh, I can't do it. Go get it. I got my license at 21. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do it. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Just go get it. So don't make that a obstacle that doesn't allow you to go get your financial freedom. Yep. But the bigger conversation, I'll have a bigger conversation about it and what my feelings are. <laughs> yeah. But don't let it stop you. Yeah. Because it's, it's what they will hate is to see a bunch of more people going to go get your license and now they haven't stopped anything. Mm -hmm. Because you don't, because the Association of Realtors pushed this, you don't have to go get a license, you don't have to go get your association with the realtors because right. you don't need MLS access. We've developed products like PropStream and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff where mm -hmm. you don't need to have MLS access to do this stuff. Yep. So it won't help them if that's what they think and that they get more commissions and fees. I don't know. You know, I, I get it. Maybe there's some people out there that, um, you know, feel like they, sh they should be represented by somebody in a, with a license or, you know, some seller wants <clears throat> things to go that way. But I don't think so. I, here's think, what, I, here's, I think this is just If there's a, a body of government that yeah. wants to interject on something, yeah. get me a sound mind that can help me negotiate my health insurance with the health company. That's what you guys need to go yeah. out and create that yeah. body of... Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I can better understand why I'm giving you $10,000 mm -hmm. a year for mm -hmm. health insurance. Mm -hmm. Anyways, man, so... Yeah. In Phoenix, are you doing any other markets right now? Or are you just sticking to Phoenix? Uh, I do some work with uh, Tom Kroll in okay. Florida. So okay. I, I, he gives me his list. I send him leads. He's in Port St. Lucie. Up. He's in Port St. Lucie. Beautiful place. Crushing it. Um, so that's it. Yeah. I mean, I go all of Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, I like some of the smaller towns that yeah. are kind of like the um, the vacation or second home towns that, that are really great. That's been, that's been phenomenal. But, yeah, I mean... It's th there's opportunity. There's plenty of opportunity. We have a great buyer base, mm -hmm. right? We negotiate strong. So, I mean, we average $27,000 a deal. Love it. In what's, you know, the guru market of the world, world right? Yeah. Everybody's there. If you if, if you have a real estate trading course, you, you, you have to have like a Phoenix uh, uh, address. Yeah. Zip code <laughs> of some sort. It's crazy, dude. It's I don't know why it is, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a great place. It's a hot spot. And what do you uh, say? What do you say to your students that say, well, I'm in a small town? Yep. Oh, I think it's way faster to get deals in small towns i agree too way fast i mean you can get i mean who the the people that i the people and this is honest max the people that are in b markets like less than a million people let's mm -hmm. say around that kind of million a, a little bit less right, right yeah three hundred fifty thousand. right yeah we're said? probably in a c market they do the best the fastest now the issue is running out of distress lists mm -hmm. right because you can call a lot of people and you can keep calling them but the first time you call them is the most effective yep it just is the first time you call through a list you're gonna have more contacts than the second or third or fourth that's mm -hmm. just how it is and um so with smaller markets you got you have to be obsessed with your driving for dollars list. You have to be obsessed with those like really filtered, maybe stacked lists. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, if you had a thousand addresses that you did everything, right? You went to their door, you called them, you texted them, you voicemailed them, you left a little flyer, whatever. you did whatever, you Facebook message, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. To try to have a conversation with the owner, even if they tell you no, so that you can keep chart of it. If you have a thousand addresses in there, I guarantee you, you'd find 20 deals in there if you obsessed over it. And that's right? the thing. You got to want it. You got to. You got to want it. That's it. Man, this and has so been amazing. I don't care if it's a big market or a small market. I, I honestly think that the advantage right now is in the smaller market. Yeah, I think so, too. And and the, I, that's why I love being here. I do venture out to like the Charlottes and places like that but right here in my market in the triad i like just being you know in this in this small market crushing it yep um man this is a good conversation i like just having no topic just keep yeah. going and I, it, I think it's interesting to me i think it's good to people to watch that that uh that are starting in this business that mm -hmm. are in this business mm -hmm. um yeah man i think it's important and i i love what you're doing here in the community 
Um, cause we had this conversation before we got mm-hmm. live here about the outreach that you do, the meetups that you do and your big plan. Yeah. We won't talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> the, the next, you know, the next phase Maxwell, uh, 2.3.10.0, <laughs> whatever it is. Right. Um, but I think it's important when you're starting out, um, the hardest part is to understand, is this a deal or no deal? Mm-hmm. Second hardest part is how big of a deal is this? Now, what I would highly encourage anybody listening to this to do is in your local market, if you have somebody that you think has great character, if you have somebody that you meet at a meetup, if you mm-hmm. have all this, reach out to that person when you have opportunity and let those people guide you on your first deal or two or three yep. or whatever it is. Because I am telling you, you're going to learn more from giving up whatever it is, 50% of your deal, let's say at the highest, right? Learning more about the process there of actually closing a deal. Yep. Walking you through the process. Walking through it, then not understanding, is this a deal? Is it not a deal? And how big? You might think it's a $10,000 deal when it's a 30,000. You, yeah. you bring it to Max and he's like, no, this is a this is a $40,000 deal. And I say it all the time. Woo! Do you want all of the grape or half of a watermelon. Sure. That, and that's the difference. And and be honest, and a lot of people reach out to you. A lot of people reach mm-hmm. out to me through any methods of contact, through yep. email, direct yep. message, Facebook, knocking on my door, whatever it is, it's much more appealing when the conversation starts. Hey, Max, I have a deal. Mm-hmm. Do you think we can make some money on this? Yep. Versus, hey, I want to learn. Can you comp this? Yeah, I want to learn more about real estate. Can you help me? Yeah, yep. there's about 100 videos online. Yep. That, that go over this. So it, it's true, man. You and I are, we're busy people. We have teams, we have an office. We actually do this business every single day. Yep. Um, you know, and but we own a business, so we don't have to be in the office every single day. But I love that you're proactive in your business and you yeah. have been since day one. I mean, yeah. you started talking about cold calling way back. You started being a proactive way I was, back. I was the, I was the crazy guy. Yeah. Oh, I know. Me I, too. I was the crazy because remember. So I got you this. Now I listen. Need, I need it. This, this doesn't. I, mean, I was waiting this, for that. This isn't. This isn't got you know Adidas on it. So no. listen. I know, like on camera. I don't know if you could wear it, but you know, Absolutely I know on, I on a it. nice, easy Sunday morning, I know what you're going to be wearing because that TTP no, shirt. Gonna, is I'm going to wear this uh, around because you want to know why people are going to ask me what TTP <laughs> 100%. is. Hundred percent. They say, "What is TTP?" Yep. Yep. Talk to people. Talk man. to people. That, I mean, it's so easy. It's the full. It, 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 it's. It is the foundation. If you understand quality conversations with distressed property owners, mm-hmm. you're going to win. If you go to bed and you go, how many did I have? How many conversations did I have? Or if you know you didn't do anything because that little monster called creative avoidance peaks its head. And mm-hmm. then, you know, you're all of a sudden, you know, learning in the YouTube phase where you're learning about title and escrow and you're learning about all this. You're getting educated or you're doing all these things that are stopping you from having conversations. Pull yourself out. Understand this is an easy business. My head's just hurting of thinking people that just start this business that feel like they have to know all of that to get to the end. Oh, yeah. The reality is when I got my first deal, I knew none of that stuff. None. None of that stuff. I literally said, got a deal. Okay. Let me find an attorney. Oh, called a friend. He said, oh, yeah, this guy's an attorney. Talked to the attorney. He said, yep, I can help you. Boom. Move to the next deal. Next deal. Who's a buyer? I don't know. Put it on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Oh, buyer called me. Hey, attorney, I got a buyer. Cool. Get this contract signed. Boom. Move. It just was... It, as I went from step to step, I learned mm-hmm. and it just became clearer and clearer over time yeah. how to re- repeat this process yep. and actually create a business. Well, and I think when people are just starting this thing out, the less you know, the way better. Because all of a sudden, you're going to let your closing attorney do their job. Mm-hmm. You're going to let the title company do their job. I have tried to train so many other real estate agents in this. And they just, it just doesn't settle in. They want to control everything because they think it's like a customer service type of thing. And it's a totally different perspective. It's totally different. You got to let the people do their jobs and you got to get the right title and escrow company or closing attorney, right? You got to get the right lending partners to be able to max up, I mean, match up with your buyers and Mm -hmm. you got to have a robust buyer base. Yeah. So let's let's yeah. before we end this, let's talk about a topic that most people don't really talk about. And okay. it's like for me over the last three years, boom, success, crazy. Oh my God, walk through the airport, people know who I am, and mm-hmm. cities have pop ups, two hundred people show. Like that's crazy and all good and great. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about like the downside mm-hmm. of becoming one, a successful business owner. Yep. And two, being an influencer and mm-hmm. 
like how has how has that affected you as a person? I love it. Um, I have had to learn, and this is very difficult for me because I have a very um, kind of what I would like to consider versatile um, 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 personality. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so I like saying yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. The problem is. The, there's a lot of different opportunities that you can't, if, if you want to, one, if you want to stick with the best things, if you want to stick with the best people or companies or situations, then you have to say no to the ones that don't fit. Yeah. And I think that that comes with some experience. I think that that comes with um, uh, promoting or encouraging people to use certain services, not because they're paying you, mm -hmm. but because they're the best for the people, the audience listening, right? So you actually just, I'm pretty sure just like I do, yeah. I never talk about a service yeah. till I vetted never. them and then I use them mm -hmm. in my business. So everything mm -hmm. I say, go use this, I use it. Yep. Sometimes there's a check attached to the other side of yeah. me talking about it. Yeah. Sometimes there's not, but I truly only, there's, there's dozens of emails a week of people. Hey, can you promote our product? Yep. No, I yep. don't use it, yep. but it looks like something good. So, so for th yeah, that's I, and it, I whatever I'm feeling, yeah. I, I know that you're feeling yeah. it ten times. But you really have to, and then and then one of the tough parts is, well, wait, should I create my own business that does this mm -hmm. service for the people out there to make sure it's best? Yeah, and is that a distraction from what I'm doing? Is that mm -hmm. a distraction from my company? Is that a distraction from the coaching? Is that a distraction yeah. from you know the content you know and on YouTube and podcasts and everything? So I think it's just. Um, I, I'm in a very, very wonderful situation, Max. Yeah. And I think that you're in that place too, where I love doing the videos. I love putting out the content. I love doing the podcast. Most importantly, I love the coaching, right? Mm -hmm. I love the slice going crazy. <laughs> I love I, I love the opportunity to work with people one on one. I truly do. Yeah, I do. And and just it's the happiest time in my life professionally for sure. I haven't figured out that part. Right. The uh, the happy part of one on one. That's why I haven't done one on one coaching. Yep. Um, I love my travel. I love my freedom. That's that's what I've financially over the last three years. That's what I've gained the most is being able to just get up and go wherever I want to go when I want to go. So the commitment of the one-on-one -on -one training has scared me sure. a lot sure, to where I haven't done it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I love the upside of people walking up to me and saying, hey, you changed my life. Mm -hmm. Or because of I watched this video, I went out and did this. And, it, you know, I'm able to provide for my kids yeah. or I'm able to help my mother or whatever that story is. I love those stories. And, you know, I, overall, it's a plus plus for me. Mm -hmm. Um there's some con sides to it, you know, the, the balance of whatever it is. Yeah. But overall, man, it's, it's a plus. And I think we just like yeah. helping and helping people because we, it, something we found helped us and we're like, Oh my God, you gotta do this. Yeah. You gotta try this. It's like, eating, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like eating at a great restaurant mm -hmm. and wanting to tell friends, you gotta go here and get this meal. Yeah. It's the same thing. When I learned that the financial freedom and how I can create my own wealth, I was like, I, you got to do this. this mm -hmm. is, you got to do this. Yeah. And I think it's important to do it from an instructional basis. Yeah. yeah. Go do this. Not me going up and being like, look at all this money I'm making from these deals and this no. and this and this and being vague or being, you know, trying to explain how much I know and been yeah. in the industry and that type of thing. You know what I mean? No. Here's what you do. Go do it. It'd be all, it's it's not it, it, it's not rocket science. It's, we're, we're really not building rockets. We're building relationships. We're talking to distressed property owners. That's it. I have, I just I want to stand on this soapbox as high as I can <laughs> and just tell people be proactive. Yep. Like for real. You can figure it like out. just be proactive. You don't need to have a budget. You don't need to have experience. You just need to have the commitment and just stick to it. That's and it. consistency. Consistency. And that's what it is. And people do that. They they win. They win. I love it. And and for everybody watching on iTunes or YouTube, however you're consuming this, I think the biggest thing I've taken away from our conversation is you need to consistently talk to distress homeowners. Mm -hmm. Period. That's it. That's it. That's consistently. The business. Consistently. That's it. It's, it's as as long as we've been talking. That's what I got. If you're not consistently talking to distressed property owners, mm -hmm. then you are not going to make it in this business because right. that's the only way you build your pipeline. So yep. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you need to be talking to distressed homeowners. That's it. 
And there's there's three ways, right? You can buy those conversations with marketing, mm -hmm. right? You can have them call you, yep. you can put up banded signs, mail, whatever it is. You can you can have those conversations, but you're buying them. Mm -hmm. You can wait for them by getting a bunch of referrals, mm -hmm. right? You can get you could be the guy, right? You could be the guy that everybody brings their deals to or the gal mm -hmm. that brings their deals to, but that takes time mm -hmm. and and is it consistent? Do you have that enough? Are you you're still waiting around? Or you can be proactive. You can go out and get those conversations. Go out and make those. Conversations. You can make them. Make those conversations. I love it. Yeah. So Brent, where can people find you? Because I know you're active on IG now. Yes. You're at, your YouTube's grown. I think yep. you're at 13, 14 thousand yep. subscribers. It's I been love amazing. It. Um, where can people find you? Yeah, Brent Daniels Real Estate on YouTube. Um, that would be the best. And then uh, Brent Daniels underscore TTP on Instagram. Check That's it out. That's simple. So if you're on IG, yep. you're on YouTube, you know where to find Brent. Yep. And you're still taking people into your TTP class? I am. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, if they want to check that out, that's at Wholesaling Inc. forward slash nice. TTP. Got it. And um, yeah, check it out. There's testimonials. There's an ex it, it, It's legit. It, it's a breakdown of all the things that happen. And you just help people understand yeah. where to get the data from, how to talk to people, and how to convert these conversations into actual who checks. To, who to call, what to say to them, and how to be consistent. Woo! That's and it. then you scale. Right. I mean, I mean, then you start having people do it for you and everything. So it's phenomenal. I mean, the testimonials are bananas. Yeah. I mean, you got to scroll and scroll and scroll. Do you have any planned places you're going to be at soon? Like uh, where you're speaking yeah. at, where are you going to be at? I'm going to be with you in Mississippi. Oh, yeah. For at the, the real estate roundup. The roundup. Real estate roundup. Yep. Um, check out the links below. I'm going to put the, the where you can go buy a ticket. It's in Mississippi. Mississippi. Is it at the casino? I hope <laughs> not. <laughs> I hope is it not. at the casino? I hope not, bro. <laughs> well, I think it's in, it's in I think it's in Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah. I think it's at a casino, so I may be late for whatever I'm talking about. Yeah. If I'm winning, I'm not coming. Oh no. You can just cancel it. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. My buddy's big sit, Mississippi. Yep. Uh, guys that I know before I even got into real estate are holding a conference. They're very good at creative and deals, and I like the format that I've seen mm -hmm. them coming out. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Anywhere else you're going? That's it. Cool. That's so, it for this year. Yeah. yeah. So boom. So uh, I'll put the link below where you both see us speak in the same building. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yep. And and that's it, man. That's so it. go check him out on YouTube. Yeah. Go find him on Instagram. Yep. Uh, go check out his course. Mm -hmm. And I'm in. I, I appreciate this conversation. Awesome. I really, no, truly. I just appreciate having a high level conversation. The ones we had before this. Yeah. The one now. And uh, I'm pretty sure everybody appreciates you giving. So. I, I appreciate it. The, the The amount of people that come into my program that started with watching your videos is unbelievable. Just sparking the interest, It right? is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then either they go out and they take the advice that you give and get their first deals and then start rolling and want to take it serious and take it to the next yeah. level. Or they're just like, hey, I've got this budget now. I got to do this now so that it doesn't slip away. Yeah. And they just get inspired. So, I mean, from a... You're inspiring people that that didn't have somebody to inspire them before, yeah. and the audience that you have is phenomenal. They are proactive. They are out there doing They're things. Hungry. They are, man. I, I mean, it's the best. I mean, it really does. And you've stirred that up for the last two years, and I think it's something that needed to happen. And you're you're the guy. So I'm, it's I'm this, glad. This has been an honor. This I'm has been a happened. pleasure. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So. If you guys are listening to this on iTunes or however you listen to your podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube, all I need is two minutes of your time and I'm asking for a favor. All I need you to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the bell so you see when I'm posting new videos. And if you're listening to this on any podcast format, please give me a five-star rating, leave a review. It helps me go in the rankings. I'm not asking for any money. This is the only type of compensation I want is you to give me a five-star review and subscribe. That way I can keep putting out these videos. I can keep having people like Brent that mm -hmm. wants to come on here mm -hmm. and we'll keep giving. So make sure you follow me, follow Brent, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Wholesaling Houses Elite Podcast with Max Maxwell. Make sure to tune in next week to see what elite wholesaler will have in the hot seat.